Welcome. This video is actually a question. In an Algebra 2 course, we teach kids how to factor quadratics by doing a technique called splitting the middle term. Uh, as a little example, suppose I wanted to factor 3x squared plus 11x plus 10. What we ask kids to do is to look at the first and last term, the first and last coefficients, 3 and 10, multiply them together as 30, and find factors of 30 that add to the middle term. Well, 30 is 6 times 5, and 6 plus 5 is 11. And we suggest them that they split the middle term into 6x plus 5x, the two factors you thought of. And then something magical happens. Uh, from the first two parts, we see a common factor of 3 and x, so that leaves behind an x plus 2. On the latter two parts, we see a common factor of 5, leaves an x plus 2. Wow, common factor of x plus 2. And we get 3x plus 5 times x plus 2. Magic. Uh, just one more example. Suppose we wanted to factor 2x squared plus 7x minus 4. What we're really looking for is factors of negative 8 that add up to 7. Well, one thinks of 8 and negative 1. So 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, and 8 plus negative 1 um, is the 7 in the middle. Great. Well, the first two terms have a common factor of 2x, x plus 4. The last two terms have a common factor of negative 1, x plus 4. And again, magic occurs. 2x uh, minus 1, big pardon, times x plus 4. And this technique is wonderful for the problems for which it is designed to work, which is most everything in an Algebra 2 textbook. In uh, the real world, this is just a... Uh, well, this just doesn't happen. But that's beside the point. We don't, we don't question such things in a, in a high school curriculum. All right. Now, snotty comments aside, uh, there's actually something very deep going on in here. Notice that I, we'd like to stay with integer coefficients, and we have factors that stay with integer coefficients. So here's my deep question. When I've asked people, why does this work, they always actually start with the converse. You know, suppose I've got... Uh, two terms in integers ax plus b times cx plus d and if I expand it out I'll get acx squared plus I'll get let's see I'll get a bc and an ad so bc plus ad x and the final term is bd and look at it the first and last two numbers if I multiply them together I get acbd and look at these two terms are they factors of this product well yeah bc is a factor there it is ad is a factor there it is and look, they're adding to the middle term. So, if I can recognize this pattern in a quadratic I'm given, that the middle term really is the sum of two things whose factors, uh, whose product is, uh, um, is the product of the last two terms, um, then I'm saying, well, I've really got this going on. Well, that's, a, that's not really an explanation. So here's my question and challenge for you, and you'll be surprised how difficult it is to actually prove it. This is what's really going on in the scene. So let me just change color pen because it feels important. What I'm really asking is the following. Suppose I give you a quadratic, ax squared, and I'll say p plus qx plus c. And I tell you that this middle term, which is the sum of two things, p plus q, has the property that p and q equals the product of the first and last term. So I'll give you this, and I'll give you this. Using only this information, and this is what the theorem is really saying, prove that after a little bit of algebra, <laughs> good luck, that in the end this becomes something of the ilk ex plus f, gx plus h, where these numbers are guaranteed to be integers. That's the zinger. It is true. It does work out this way. But my challenge to you is to prove it. Good luck. It is mighty hard, and most people don't realize there's something so hard sitting in the Algebra 2 curriculum. That's all I'm going to say. Good luck. Have fun with it. Thanks.